All right. First question for Coach Dillingham. Ira, Tim. Ira. Well, Coach, we've all um, – and for, welcome to Tallahassee. I should have said that to Coach also. But um, what, um, we've read the stories about you getting into coaching as a, as a high school senior, I guess. Um, what was that like? How did you go about coaching peers? I mean, at the end of the day, the, the relationship you build, whether regardless of your age, is determined by how you act. You know, age is purely a number. And, uh, you know, my dad's 72, my older brother's 45. So I grew up in an environment where I was forced to be more mature than, you know, my peers. And then uh, when I was blessed for the opportunity to start coaching at the age of 17, and I was coaching the JV team, you know, kids that were 15, 16, and I'm 17, you know, it, I learned a lot. I learned what the boundaries were to be similar in age to players. I mean, I'm a year apart. Guys go are in the same class as me. So it taught me a lot in terms of what those boundaries are in coaching. And, uh, you know, the old I'm 29, so the older I get, I feel like I'm like ages away from these guys now from compared to what I used to when I started. How you doing? Um, just generally speaking, how would how would you describe your your philosophy and, and scheme on offense? Pro style offense that plays fast. I mean that is that is our identity. We're a system built for playmakers. And when you look at the pass and you look at this offense and what it's accomplished, I mean Coach Norvell and this this system is one of two systems over the last seven years to have a thousand yard receiver every single season. It, two years ago, my last year at Memphis with Coach Norvell, we had a back with 2,000 yards, another back with 1,000 yards, and a third back who accounted for total yards of over 1,000, right? It is a system our quarterbacks account. If you play quarterback here, you're going to account for 3,500 yards, uh, whether it's rushing, whether it's receiving at a minimum, and have roughly 35 touchdowns, right? That's been the standards at Arizona State, and those numbers have fluctuated. But it's a system that's going to adapt. Uh, but it's a system built around playmakers, and it's built for playmakers. And uh, there's not a better place to attract. There's not a better brand that attracts playmakers than Florida State. So I'm excited to have this system at this university. Go to Dean on your left. Coach, good afternoon. How you doing? Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, what is now? You've obviously worked work with Coach Norvell before, offensive-minded guys. So how do you guys go about the interplay offense, the game plan? Just kind of walk me through kind of the game planning during the week and then in-game. What is your interaction with him in-game, play calling, that type of thing? We have a very, very unique relationship. I mean, me and Coach, we're, we're on the same page 99% of the time. So uh, the inner workings of, uh, of how we operate is unique to probably anybody in college football. I mean, he could be in another room. I could be in my office, and we come together and share ideas in a game plan. And uh, nine times out of ten, we're bringing the same ideas to the, to the table, even if those ideas aren't even something we've run this year. But we just know how we think. We both know how we both want to attack. And I think that's why it's a unique dynamic between us, and that's why I'm super excited to be back with him and to be here is because you want to be around, like Coach said, like-minded people. And uh, to be around a guy like Coach Norvell, one of the best offensive minds in college football, it challenges me, it challenges our staff uh, to put together the best plan. Because when you present it to Coach, when, when you do those things, the standard is excellence. And you're going to have to have the answers, every answer, because that's the standard he sets. And not just on offense, but in all phases of the program. What was your first impression of Mike Norvell, and I guess when, when did you meet Coach? So I was a 20-year-old, 21-year-old, uh, somewhere in there, and I graduated from high school, became the offensive coordinator at Chaparral, and, uh, which is 15 minutes away. And I went to practice, and I was nervous. And I walked over to him and I said, Hi, I'm Kenny. I coach at Chaparral High School. And then I kind of, that was it. I thought that was it. I just wanted to meet him. He was the top mind in college football. He was a 31-year-old offensive coordinator. The RPO game had barely started. He was one of the innovators of it. And he goes, uh, hey, nice to meet you. You know, if there's anything I can ever do for you, anything you want to come up to my office and, and watch film and sit in quarterback meetings, you can. Well, little did he know that I was going to sit in every single meeting the rest of spring and be the, the dude in the corner. So I, you know, from right then I knew this was a special guy. 
because I'm a, I'm a guy who has zero, adds zero value to his life. And he extended an olive branch, receiving nothing in return to let me come up there and sit in those meetings. And, and right there I knew that this was a guy that I wanted to attach myself with. This is a guy I wanted to learn from, and this is a guy I wanted to model after. Kind of on that note, when, when you had the opportunity to, to go to Auburn, are you thinking, you know, maybe one day down the road, hoping that your paths could cross again? And then when you saw uh, he had the opportunity at Florida State, is the mind maybe start working that you could one day be together again, you know, maybe soon? I mean, I always felt like me and Coach, regardless, we're always going to have a relationship. I mean, we had a relationship throughout the entire season. We would talk all year. Well, I mean, we, we would talk scheme all year with each other via text message. I'd send him videos of things the defense is doing. He'd do the same back, and we'd discuss. So to say was I, was I wish and hope and no, to say that I knew we have a really strong – I know we have a really strong relationship, and I know how well we work together. I mean, the last two years at Memphis, we were together. We were the number two offense and number four offense in the country, attacking two completely different ways with a 4,500-yard receiver and then 4,000 yards via running backs. Uh, with a new quarterback change. So to answer your question, I'd say he's always a guy I want to work for. And he's the, the guy I want to work for. Stay on the front row, Chris. Coach, how are you? Two questions. First one, looking at the offensive roster, what have you learned in a week about them? And the second one is when you guys, you and Coach Norvell, are evaluating quarterbacks, what are you kind of looking for from a quarterback? Is there a makeup that you're looking for? Or is it just talented guys and you'll fit the system around them with playmakers? Um, I haven't had a lot of time to really evaluate each player on our roster. You know, like Coach Fuller said, we're more evaluating the numbers and uh, the guys that we need to recruit to fill the numbers in certain spots. Uh, from a quarterback standpoint, the number one thing is we're always going to recruit a quarterback who has the physical ability. We don't care if you're an elite passer and you can't run. We don't care if you're an elite runner and you can throw the ball a little bit. We care that you win games. We care that you're smart. And the physical tools, if you're talented enough, you fit our system because we're going to adapt it. It's not a cookie cutter system that you can't have a guy who runs, you can't have a guy who passes. At Arizona State, Coach Novell coached a kid named Taylor Kelly. He threw for 3,400, ran for 700, right? The same at, at uh, Memphis, we had a quarterback who threw for 4,400 and ran for 83. Right, so it is a it is a system built around each individual player. So the quarterback position, we're looking for the intelligence, how he carries himself. We're looking for the intangibles because there's a bunch of great players all over the country that can put a highlight tape together. Right, we're looking for the guys that have that special something sauce, that special something, that X factor. Coach, you guys obviously, and you guys have talked a lot about featuring playmakers. And if you look at your statistics, um, well, coaches' statistics specifically at, at Memphis, you know, there'll be a, a few guys that get the ball a lot of different ways. When the defense kind of knows who the playmakers are, how do, you, how do you still get them the ball, even though people know where you're probably going to be going with it? Well, I think that goes back to variating tempo and formation versatility. I mean, you can ask Coach Fuller, like Coach Fuller answered. Uh, he sees everything that he wants to see in spring ball in order of what he needs to defend as a defense. And that goes back to the system being extremely multiple. We can put, we can put wide outs in the H-back set. We can put wide outs at a tight end, wide outs at running back. We can put tight ends at wide out. The system allows us so much flexibility that when we can move guys around to create matchups, to create one-on-ones, and we do that quickly – and we do that through a variation of formations, it makes it extremely difficult for a, de a team to match up player versus player. And it allows us to create those matchups and create those one-on-ones because at the end of the day, offense is about creating your one-on-one, -on -one, quarterback is a bit about finding your one-on-one, -on -one, and then the playmaker's got to win their one-on-one. -on -one. And that's why for us, that's how everything kind of goes together is we're looking for guys, and our guys in this football team are going to have one-on-one -on -one opportunities. And we're going to put you in the best situation to win your one on one. At the end of the day, they got to go win it. Your, your brief experience at Auburn, working with Coach Malzahn, I mean, just how valuable was the experience learning how to really recruit and just see how recruiting works at the highest levels of Power Five? Yeah, I think um, it was good experience. But at the end of the day, you know, everything goes back to relationships. Every kid that we recruited, it goes back to relationships. And uh, there's, there's really nothing more to it. 
uh, you got to build relationships and you got to build genuine relationships. And uh, kids are smarter than, you know, people give them credit for. Kids can see through it. Kids can see through people who are not genuine. And uh, the biggest testimony for myself, for Coach Norvell, for any coach who's genuine is reach out to former players. Call former players that we've coached. Call the Riley Fergusons. Call the Brady Whites. Call those guys. Ask them about me. Ask them about Coach. Because that is, if you're a player, what you want. You want to know what your experience is going to be the same experience those players had. And uh, I can say that the relationships I build in this profession are 100% genuine and will last a lifetime. Bill, to your right, to Tashawn. Coach, kind of on that note, how do you go about, especially when you have a, a short timeline like you do with the early signing period starting next week, how do you go about selling yourself and, and expressing to recruits and their families who you are and what you're about? I'd just be me. There's no, there's no sales pitch. There's nothing. Just I'm an energetic dude. I bounce around. Uh, I believe in it. I believe energy is – you know, it, it feeds. Energy just continues to feed off one another. Positive energy feeds off one another. One another, And I think just me being me, you know, there's no special potion. There's no magic wand I wave, even though I like Harry Potter. You know, it's literally just me being me, showing up every day with the energy I have and uh, being as genuine as I can be and being as honest as I can be. Avon in the back. I know you mentioned that you're, not um, looking at the roster per se or looking at the numbers, but, but being the quarterback is such an important position and that's kind of your, your forte and specialty. What do you think of, of some of the quarterbacks around the roster, namely James Blackman and, and Jordan Travis, looking at them off the hook? I, I haven't watched them physically. I've met, I've met with them and I think they're both phenomenal young men. They're both driven young men. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, that's the most impor important thing for us is to have guys that are driven, that are intelligent and that want to be great. And uh, after meeting them briefly, you know, 15 minutes, uh, those are the type of guys they are. So I'm excited to get to work with them. I'm excited to build a relationship with them, and I'm excited to see where it goes. So two quick questions. One was uh, Red Bull, coffee, soda. Where do, where do you get the energy? I drink a lot of coffee, but I drink black coffee. It's more for the taste, you know. It's not really for the energy. I wake, fi I wake up fired up, bushy-tailed, back handspring out of bed, so... <laughs> The other thing was, uh, did you get a chance to watch much of Memphis this past season? What did you think of Coach? I, I, I watched him every week, and I used to text, text Coach Fuller. He didn't respond the first six weeks. He's like, who is this guy I've never worked with keeps texting me, right? But, uh, no, he did respond. But uh, I used to text him all the time. I was extremely, extremely impressed with the change that they made. They went, from a, they went to a team who didn't bust. You know, we, we had a lot, of, a lot of bust with young players in those first two years, and injuries were cause, cause of it as well. But Coach Fuller got in there, and he had that extremely aggressive mindset. But when you watch them plays, there were no free runners. There were no gifts. They played, and they kept the offense in front of them. And uh, it's, a, it's very difficult from a defensive perspective to be able to play aggressive and be aggressive, but at the same time limit big plays. And I think that's the, the making of an elite defense, and that, those are the defenses that you game plan for that scare you are the ones that can create the explosive plays defensively through TFLs, through interceptions, they get takeaways, but limit those explosive plays offensively. And when you watch Coach Fuller's defenses, you can see they play with passion, you can see they play with energy, and uh, they don't give up the big play, but they create them. Corey? Coach, why was it important you, for you to leave Memphis last year to go to Auburn? Obviously, you liked working with Coach Norvell, but was it for a different opportunity? Um, just to get outside of him a little bit, to do it on your own? What, what, why did you do that? I think it's just the opportunity. I mean, uh, that's an unbelievable institution. And uh, it was an opportunity that Coach and I talked about together. Coach Ravel talked, to, talked about together because he's not just, you know, a guy I work with. He's a guy I lean on. He's a mentor. And uh, it was an opportunity that we decided was, was best for me in my career at that time, and it was an extremely difficult one to make because of my relationship with him. But uh, at the end, everything happens for a reason, and the experience that I learned there is going to add value here. 
I guess I'm really guilty of this, of, of looking at whoever's calling the offensive plays. That's kind of like the, the most important thing you can, you can do and be on, on that part of the ball. But uh, for you, is your job to make Coach Norvell's life as easy as possible? Or what is like the true value you, you like to think that you bring to that side of the ball, even if you're not calling plays? I think, I think the value is the structure, the passion, the energy, how our guys play, the schematics behind it. I mean, me and Coach Norvell, like I said, we have a unique dynamic when we work together. And uh, it's a special dynamic, and I don't know how to explain it. I don't know how to explain game day. I don't know how to explain game planning. You can't put it into a, you know, a cookie cutter of how this profession tries to put situations in cookie cutters. Uh, and it's a very, very unique and special relationship we have offensively and uh, as a program. And uh, I'm just blessed to be here. You haven't had a practice or a game yet here, but when you're back with Coach Norvell, like, does it just sort of feel like picking up right where you left off in terms of that dynamic and relationship? Uh, reunited and it feels so good. I mean, pretty much. That's how it is. I mean, we never skipped a beat. Got right back. We're rooming together right now. And uh, it, we just fell right into place like we never, like we never missed a beat. All right. Coach, when, you, when you're talking to players in the state of Florida, um, are they aware now of, of what, what Memphis did um, offensively and, and what coaches' teams have done? And, and how excited are they to, to kind of have the opportunity to maybe be in this offense? Well, I think some guys are aware, some guys aren't. But I think that's the biggest part of, of this cycle late is we don't have to sell anything. We can show them. We don't have to go up there and, and tweak things to make it look like this offense is built for playmakers. We can put everybody in a room and we can say, if you play quarterback here, you're going to put up roughly over 3,500 yards and 35 touchdowns. You play wide out here, only one other person in seven years has had a 1,000-yard receiver every year. That's Lincoln Riley, other than Coach Mike Norvell. We can say our running backs, two of them were drafted at Memphis. We had a 2,000-yard back. I left. He left. We had another 2,000-yard back in Kenny Gainwell, who's a freshman. We can say our tight end's productivity is top five in all of college football over the four years we were there. So it sells itself. So I think combining this offense and the success it's had with this brand, which this brand is one of the most iconic brands and not just college football, but the United States as an institution, this brand combined with this system, combined with Coach Fuller's system, is something that I'm extremely excited about to see what we can do. How did they react when you, know, you guys came in? And just what's their response to you been? Excited. I think they're excited. I think they know they're going to be in a system for uh, a longer period of time. And I think they, they understand it's a system that they can have extreme success in. Uh, but that goes back to the relationships. And uh, I, I don't expect them to trust me. I don't expect them to believe a word I say right now. I just expect them to give me a chance. That's it. I just want a chance to coach you. I want a chance for you to learn, and I, and I want a chance to put you in this system and uh, see what we can do. Anything else? All right. Thank you, Joe. Thank you all.